Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2 from the King of Battles to Grand Finals. The only two players I think you consider, you could consider for that title as the King of all StarCraft 2 battles, fighting out more this year than we've ever seen them before. There were several years where they played hard to get. All right, will they, won't they? Will Maru lose to Cure? Back before Cure was the best Terran in the world, of course. Uh, before facing Sarah, will Sarah lose to Raynor? Will mere matchups be the death of StarCraft 2? No. Instead, these two have faced off several times and will again, possibly for the last time and maybe best time this year in a best of seven. Let me first introduce the first non-Korean world champion and still one of the best, even if the youngins are gunning for him. Making it this far all the way to the end. Of course, the finisher, Cyril. And up against him. <clears throat> For over 10 years, since 13 years old in the Global StarCraft League, which really meant Korea, which contained the vast majority of top pro gamers and still contains this man, this myth, this Maru. Yes. Defining and redefining what it is to play Terran and then borrowing from his own playbook from many years ago, repeatedly. Uh, he continues to be on the bleeding edge of Terran and of StarCraft 2 and doesn't show any signs of slowing. Other players might steal a little time in the spotlight, but none have had it shine upon them as much as Maru winning four GSLs in a row. I believe it was in a row. I'm pretty sure it's in a row. But, and winning, I, I, I'm, okay, I'm not 100% confident. Both these players have won nearly a million dollars. I think it depends exactly on how you measure it. Uh, maybe between the games, Jimmy could actually have these stats prepared, but that would take planning. <gasps> the first Reaper. Ladies no Clem. We got him. No Clem. But, uh... The first Reaper going down is kind of surprising to see. You're not you're not used to it. You're not trained for it. So definitely something different to start. But back to basics. Back to things we understand. Maru is going 2-1-1. For all you Beyonabees in the chat and in the comments, you know the 2-1-1. It's the build every Diamond player tries to do, usually succeeds, and then wonders why they end up losing the game because they got supply blocked with 1,400 minerals for several minutes. Except I seriously doubt Maru is going to be the one to do that. Two barracks, one factory, one starport. Uh, the classic choice. 16 marines with stim. Probably the most dangerous push you can put together, but a big commitment. And Cyril is starting off with something a little different. He's got a second gas, and he has a roach warning. How many drones is he going towards? Past 40. It looks like he wants to defend with this. Uh, I'm not sure. What has he seen in the main? The Overlord sees a second. Is that the second gas? I believe so. Does that give away enough here for Cyril? Apparently, as, as he backed off with the Obi, I think he saw some of the Marines patrolling. Just based on the fact there aren't any, uh, yeah, well, that if he didn't know before. Based on the fact there were no Hellions, the second gas, he's going to defend with Roaches. So, Roaches are a much more direct response. They're a brute force option. Maru has uh, lost GSL finals to the brute force options before. I remember Rogue versus Maru earlier this year where Maru kept trying to go 3cc and Rogue just punched him in the face like four times. Uh, ended up winning 4-1, to one, and only because he kind of screwed up on one of the games. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see that here, but two medevacs with Marines are okay against Roaches. They're just not going to want to engage heads up. Of course, Roaches, much to their dismay, as well as the Queens, which we don't talk about, they cannot fly. Medevacs, on the other hand, 
uh, not restrained by such terrestrial boundaries. Maru not going to be intimidated by a little bit of creep spread. He knows how easily that can be taken out, especially if Cyril gets caught on the wrong side of the map. The creep, in fact, he's just going straight for it. Cuts off the tumor, picks up, dodges already. Like, not even pretending like the roaches are going to compete for the queen. Get, we don't like your kind around here. Now, if only queens had plus one air range. I don't want to give anyone any suggestions, but... uh Maybe, maybe that medevac would have died. Well, that medevac certainly would have died with one more range, but... <laughs> Maru driven back. That was probably the most obvious move he could have made, and Sarah was ready for it. 58 drones. 1-1 one, one started for Maru. 58 drones, though, with, with plus one, and we should see that carapace upgrade, Sarah. Thank you. With plus one, plus one on the way. It is still going to be the mass roach option. Will he just flood the 200 supply? Or are we going to see a transition into the Ling Bane? This is a limited time only unit composition. Uh, wow, Maru retargeting. Serral dodges, but collateral damage hits one. Does he have an armory? No. So, uh, Maru has been getting the armory pretty quick. Explicitly for Widow Mines and, and remaining cloaked. Roach is also less vulnerable to the uh, Minecraft place, as uh, the splash damage doesn't kill a nearly infinite amount of them. Infestation Pit is on the way. Maru's still working on the creep spread. Cyril, 68 drones. Pretty nice number. Almost there. Still, all 16 marines. Did he repair one of those? I don't know if he brought it all the way home, but it, it looks like there was some repair. Cyril's still leveraging the supply. Limited time only means that this army at 200 supply, roaches just pound for pound don't trade well with the bio, with the tanks. But their advantage is how many of them you can get uh, and how quickly. As, I mean, inspired by the uh, more real-life counterpart. Roaches and ravagers to bludgeon the Terran army before it ever comes together. One of these marines is not like the others. Oh, Roaches and Ravagers trying to make their way in. Actually, Unsiege is one of the tanks trying to back off. Some tank shells coming out. A bit of a disjointed fight, but able to take the front is Serral the back. For now, Maru going to be able to hold the line. Evacuates the third. 187 supply at 8 minutes with 1-1 one, one done. Just going to go for it here. Serral, can he come up the ramp? There are depots. Shotguns out some corrosive bile. Maru's actually supply blocked at 122. Another round. Cyril. Oh, some depots are dropped in the back to reinforce. Still supply block. Cyril not going to make the mistake of coming up the ramp, at least not quite yet. He's going to take the rest of the map here as he gets 2 2. So does Maru. Oh, going for the orbital. Somehow missed. Maru cut his losses, but he has lost a lot. He can't even build more units for quite a while yet because so much of his infrastructure was tied up there. Has to stem away. Tank shells coming out. A lot left on the field for Cyril, but this is a war of attrition. It's not about being cost effective. It's just about being effective. And right now, with only two bases, the main is quickly mining out for Maru. He only has access. There's a maximum amount of minerals you can drag out at a time. Of course, mules uh, increase that number. But the income, heavily in favor of Serral now, as four bases to two have a tendency to look like that. A scan spots that there is only one fourth base right now. I know, it sounds weird to say, but usually Zerg players, at least oftentimes, they double expand in order to... Uh, diversify their portfolio, make sure they're less vulnerable to losing one that drops. Oh, double kill on the tanks. The triple medevac coming back home under fire. Maru now at 70 army supply against 126. Hive is on the way. Lurker Den, that last tier of tech here. And it looks like Cyril has had enough. He's just going to try to bash his way through as Maru attempts to hold the line. The boys are pulled. 11 SCVs down. The roach is cleared. And Maru somehow holds.
but at what cost? Barely enough bio to even justify the medevax. The creep spread is outside his front door and now creeping in. The upgrades, plus two, plus two, finishing for Cyril. Maru's not far off either. More corrosive biles, finds a tank, two more popping out. Roaches and ravagers trying to mine what he can. Cyril down 60, oh, up 60 supply, I apologize. More corrosive bile, another tank, and another one. Down to two. Seven, eight more SCVs. Maru continues bleeding out. The creep is encroaching on the command center itself, giving that maneuverability to the finished Zerg. The orbital itself. The shotguns. The Biles knock it. Not quite. He saves the command center. But can he save the rest? Oh my, wait a second. The splash damage. Cyril went one step too far. But the creep. He can't even land it! Ah! Oh. He can't land because the creep has now reached into the orbital location. There's nothing stopping Cyril from replenishing his army. He has the same economy or better that he's had the whole game. He's staying next to 200 supply as Hive Tech plus three plus three. Maru is desperate to get a critical mass of tanks, so that way the Roach Ravager can no longer bully him like this. But every time he tries to step forward, he's forced to take a couple steps back. Maru is running out of time and minerals, whereas Cyril still has most of the rest of the map. Another command center has landed at a fourth base, and that could be a critical mistake, but wait! The Vipers! have arrived on the field. A new challenger approaches and not one Maru's gonna be happy to see. We were waiting for this parasitic bomb on the medevac. Splits one immediately. There's actually no other anti-air, so we can kind of just use it for, for scouting. Uh, the creep is getting driven back. Maru's at 84 army supply. Cyril, if he was still on lair tech and he was still on Roach Ravager, yeah, this wouldn't be amazing. This wouldn't be great. Maru is slowly dragging the supply gap back to a, a minimal quantity, but he's got a hive. He's got 70 drones. He's got 3-3 three, three on the way. Lurker range as well. Maru, as a testament to him being the best Terran in the damn world, is not dead. But that's a long way from winning the game, especially with lurkers here. One tank, two tank, red tank, only red tank. There are no blue tanks, no neuroparasite. Couple Vikings to try to zone out the Vipers. There is no anti-air really built in. He's gonna need some, some Hydralis in order to take him out. Ha Maru is, why are you still alive? Can we go to game two? Maru says no, Maru refuses. We will continue playing this game and in fact, Cyril is one particularly bad fight away from this being even. He's still got an advantage. He can... He didn't actually pounce on the fourth before it became a planetary, which means this is an entrenched position now. Lurkers from both sides. The, the worker counts are evening up a parasitic bomb on the medevacs full of units. Almost disaster. But not quite. Lurkers coming up the front. The scans can be right there. I don't know about that location for Cyril. Loses a couple lurkers there. He's lost four and 122 roaches. Suddenly, and not, okay, not very suddenly, but seemingly suddenly, it, the army supplies, well, well, Cyril just held down the Zergling key. He's starting to realize, well, he knows. Of course he knows. Roach Ravager just doesn't cut it. The army value is nearly even despite a 40 supply gap and that's just because Roach Ravager um, doesn't like to fight in its weight class let's put it that way he likes to bully anyone with lower army supply but as soon as they get close it really starts having a tough time all right pulls out the liberator unseizes it blinding cloud tank and planetary lurkers looking to eviscerate the SCVs and anything else in range the Lurkers doing what Lurkers do best, slicing and dicing. Another blinding cloud. The planetary cannot be saved and it cannot fly. Roaches 
And Ravagers from the left flank. Ghosts show up to the party uninvited. They'll survive for now, but that was a body blow for Marit. He really wanted that base to keep up economically. It was starting to draw kind of close to even. You see the little bit of a dip there. Um, though it's been all Cyril in the income tab. But now with only one mining base, really. As the main has been lifted and evacuated to the fourth. Uh, corrosive bile knocking down the Liberators. A lurker remains in the mineral line of the soon-to-be main slash fourth base. Cyril has it a little hesitant, a little sloppy. Okay. Um... That didn't necessarily contradict my point, uh, but is still working with a significantly higher army supply and has a, a lot of ground to give up before it's even. Now, Roach Ravager, he'll replace this. The, there's money in the bank. He's got 2,500 gas. Maru is building a disgustingly cost-effective army. Uh, ghosts are hitting the field, which are probably the most cost-effective unit in the game. But, at some point. Alright, are there vipers? The tanks? Targeting the lurkers now. Is there a blinding cloud? Parasitic bomb is the choice, which means the tanks are continuing to fire. Yanks a tank and knocks it down in the air. And Maru has to tap out game one. But, honestly, that was uh, that was too scary. I, that that should not that should have been over like nine ten minutes. Maru did not die. I don't think we try roaches again. No more roaches. No more. If I'm Cyril, not, believe it or not, I am not Cyril. He speaks way better English than I do. Um, but if I was Cyril, no more roaches. Okay, you got your one game with roaches. Ooh, that was that was dangerously close to flipping. Game two. Glittering ashes. Maybe some uh, nuclear missiles in our future. Why do I say that? They don't name the maps after the strategies. They name the maps after what they look like. Believe it or not. It is a pretty cool name. I mean, it's a lot. I still, we need, we've never had a map that's like the uh, Wings of Liberty campaign mission where the lava comes up. Now, obviously, um, pro players would immediately veto it and hate it and possibly uh, guillotine whoever added it to the map pool if we could ever find the intern. Uh, but... The people, the spectators who don't understand why that would be an absolute and utter disaster. I mean, come on. One time with the lava maps. Yeah, probably a good thing we don't have. But there's a few custom maps that, that try it. It's very hard to... Essentially, Terran is just... They can fly their buildings, so... <laughs> Anyways, give us lava maps. A pool first from sale, by the way. Not not a super cheese, but trying to evade the Reaper. And Maru did not SCV scout. Maru has a tendency to be a bit on the greedy side of things. Um, he, He's on the bleeding edge of greed until he gets punched in the nose too many times. And then he plays a little safer. Uh, it appears he is going to go without the SCV scout. The question will be, oh, the Reaper just goes straight across. He's not keeping it at home. This is six lanes. There is a potential to cancel the command center, though I don't think it's likely. He will certainly delay it. If he gets a cancel on the CC, that is a huge deal. But a few SCVs and the Reaper pulling back. Yeah, Mara's like, all right, well... <laughs> You get me the own... Well... I, yeah, I don't know if actually going into... Just because the door is open doesn't necessarily mean you should go through. Okay. Like... 
fighting into a concave there. Oh, Maru's SCV micro is actually pretty, pretty incredible. He loses one, one SCV. And uh, some mining time. And he says, oh no. Anyways, a third command center, because you know what you don't have if you went for a full first and uh, also an expansion? Is really anything to kill me, so why not? If, if the links are at Maru's base, he already knows about the investment. And if the expansion is already done, he knows there's not a bunch of roaches coming out because he saw the queen in the expo. So this is a perfectly safe third command center. Honestly, against players like Maru, I don't feel like the pool first ever really gets, unless you go all in with it. I don't feel like it ever really gets the damage you're hoping it will. But... Even even if you delay the command center, you never cancel the command center with six life. You don't kill like five SCVs. Usually you get more than one, but like So We'll see how it shapes up, but I think Maru's in a or he's in a perfectly good position. He's got his third expansion done before Cyril. So and now Cyril's gonna see it. Uh, what do you do? Got he, he's just going for the 2 one one behind, by the way. This is just a 3 2 one one now. Three barracks, or three command centers. Two barracks, factory, and starport. So, all Cyril's done is, is slightly delay the first part of the build. And he has delayed his own production as well. It'll be interesting to see Lair or Evo Chambers. I think it has to be a Lair. Right? Like, Evo Chamber's already late. Uh, there's the lair. And Maru's gonna be able to dictate the pace of the mid game this time around. La last game, the Roaches were able to turn around the Metavacs with the Queens, and Cyril never really gave up the initiative. He has no way to gain back the initiative right now. Uh, he's not gonna have the Lings because he needs the Larva for drones. Um, and he doesn't have any other tech, so. This is going to be playing defense against Maru's Metavax, which is... There is very little room for error here. Interest is... It, oh my god, is he gonna go Muta? He has no evolution chambers. Which means Baneling Speed and Mutas. Oh, well, he starts the Evo chambers, but. Otherwise, like that, if he just goes Ling Bane, his upgrades are gonna be so late. I hope Mutas. But. This is. Yeah, this. The initiative. Is all Maru here. He's just going to keep pumping out units. His production. Third barracks added on. The creeps are... Even the Baneling Nest is vulnerable. Cheeky Overlord targeting as well. There's the Spire. And a bit of a precarious position, but unlikely to be scouted very quickly. Serral opts with the Spire, which is really the only way to directly combat Metavacs. There's a whole lot of queens. Brenda's knitting crew is coming together. And this will have to hold the line for the, the full minute and a half or so until the Spire finishes up. 1-1 one, one starts, but Moru is on point with the armory. It should be done right as 1-1 one, one finishes. 2-2 two, two can kick off with essentially no delay. The queens will fight. Always called into it in the roughest scenarios. Baneling speed is done, so Cyril... He's he's really focused on unit production to make sure he can finish this spire. Look at the drone count. 68 to 67 in the workers, which means the mules will start making up the gap here. And by gap, I mean he's winning by two, two SCVs, so not really much of a gap. Oh, Brenda! 
Where are the links? There are never enough links. But for the first time in a while, we get to see some mutalisks. Which, those flying paperweights are dangerous to medevacs, but also can get blown away by a strong gust of wind, let alone a whittle mine or a handful of marines. They're just very risky and tough to control, but they they can be something one. A lot of players have not been playing against them lately. Like Maru, I'm sure is a little surprised to see him. Like... They're in the back of your mind, but you don't really think about them. Because so few players will go for it, because it's so risky. Mm, another medevac didn't quite target it in time, which means the marines are going to get some kills. Maru actually turns to target a mutalisk. But the mutas have cleared enough of the map, and now Serral has taken back map control. Maru does have 2-2 two -two on the way. He's got plus one mech armor. He's got more medevacs. Three more racks. Drilling claws. He's got an anti-muta tech tree coming together. And it's going to be finished growing pretty soon. Cyril has to decide. Am I doing the lair tech ling bane muta? Or am I going to try to uh, transition into hive? And maybe lurkers. Because Maru has not hesitated on the response here. The widow mines are obviously a problem. For everything involved. He's target firing. Oh, some even the, the Hellbats getting involved as well. He did have Hellions before. He's trying to break the four. It seemed to come off to a pretty decent start, but then the Widow Mines landed, the Hellbats held. Once again, he already had the Hellions. He didn't build Hellbats. Just want to make it clear. He didn't build Hellbats as a choice. It was just the Hellions didn't die earlier, so good for him. Plus two, plus two, finishing for Maru. He's nearly maxed. So that, that supply gap opened up by the Mutas? Gone. Cyril should be starting his Hydralist. I can't imagine he's going to go Ultras. We'll have to see. The Queens driving back Marines. There's a lot of interesting choke points on this map where you have to navigate, especially through the center, where there's like a one and a half Queen wide. Well... Okay, let's be generous. Two queen wide gap there. So getting caught in any of these locations could be devastating for whoever's on the worst worst end of it. Wow, some brood war level turrets. As in making three, maybe more, at each base. So they're trying to make the mudas work. I uh, 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 I mean on the other side, this Widow Mine has 16 kills. So... So it was looking the wrong way, trying to micro against one tank. Didn't really pan out. He's going for the Ling Bane and Lisk. There are no Widow Mines at the third, so the Banelings may be able to... Those are my thoughts on the matter. Oh no, okay, all right, Ultralisk Cavern is the choice. I mean, it was a short list of Hive Tech things. An Ultra Risk indeed. Okay, I'm Ultralisk in 2021. Is that going to be our clickbait title? I don't know. Maybe they work out. I am not optimistic, but I'm I would be very happy to be wrong. I'd love to make Ultras again. I'd love to make Mutas again. But they're both vulnerable. The better the Terran is, the worse they seem to do. But the Banelings... Whoa! God, the Widow Mine! The slick pickup on the Thor as well. Maru bleeds a few Marines out. But overall, what is the uh, current units lost? Sales lost about three, 4,000 more minerals and... Half a thousand more gas. Banelings trying to come in from the right flank. Banelings cause gas. Marines do not. That may become relevant. Banelings are used to crash through the door and open the way for the rest of your units to, to run the table. If the Banelings are your army, that's not an army. That's um a uh, one-time... That, that's a plastic 
dishware right there. What? It's a one time, then you throw it away and people are like, that wasn't very cost effective and it's bad for the environment. It's like, well, yeah, so are banelings. So not that the environment on this map is particularly great anyways, but here we are. No, like the cheap plastic, not like the, the hardened. Anyways, the chi whatever the banelings are pretty cheap. Moving on, ultralist. Titan is plating on the way. You know, I think the Ultra should get a diet upgrade. He's gonna have the, the Mucho Lisks, and then with speed, he can get the El Chapo Lisks. But for now, they're just big targets. Thors and Marauders are both quite effective against Ultras. Uh, they can punch right through the armor. There's some mines of various varieties here. There's the organic Zerg mines and the much better artificial Terran ones. But maybe... I don't even know if there are enough Marines to really matter for a, a Bane mine hit. Oh, here comes the neighborhood, though! Banelings crashing through! Oh, use the Bane mine, so that was cool. Meanwhile, though, Maru, divide and conquer. He realizes that Cyril's committed all his forces to the center. The Ultras pop out of ridiculously tiny eggs. Don't ask me how that works. This army will die, but he did kill a base, which means more time on the clock for Maru to rebuild. He has a comfortable amount of bases back at home. What is happening? Oh my god. Is he really going to pick that up? Stop it. Maru, stop. Stop. Someone stop this man. Everyone, simmer down for like five seconds, and then we can fight. Everyone calms down, goes back to their corner, one reason or another. Another round of Banelings. Mutas actually being added back on. He's looking to get that number. 15 to 20 is the nice number. You can one-shot Widowmines and Metavacs. The Ultras are crashing through the front. Does Maru have enough to respond? Yes, yes. You can't you ain't coming through there. Not until you work out some more. Get rid of some of those extra pounds. Also, he doesn't have ultra speed. He doesn't have the uh anabolic synthesis. Yes, I am proud of myself. Thank you. But ultra speed is kind of a big deal for actually attacking. There, there's a reason that upgrade exists, and Cyril may have forgotten about it, because I haven't seen Cyril make Ultras in many games. High profile- there it is. He, he pulled out his Prima strategy guide for a sec, and he's checking off the box. He's like, oh, wait a second. I know. <laughs> there it is. Both of them maxed out. Changelings triggering Widow Mines, which is actually probably a best case scenario. Mutus sniping Widow Mines. Meanwhile, the ghosts are on the field. Ghosts a good counter ever since the days of Nest T. MVP versus Nest T BlizzCon Finals. Uh, where Nest T tried out for Major League Baseball with such a ridiculous throw. Ah, that's when we learned ghosts were good, and they never stopped being good. They just changed to be even more gooder. High sec auto tracking, building armor as we sprint into the late game. There's a greater spire on the way. You know what we don't have is a lurker deck. Though, with this many ghosts and Thors out, I'm not convinced lurkers are the play. We'll have to figure out what is. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh, that's. Well, now the. Recall! Hmm. Well, they do heal, but now there's like 20 supply of mutas back here. Uh, I suck auto tracking isn't even done. It's only gonna get worse. I don't, what are the armies? There are 14 ghosts. I mean, they both still have a ton of workers, nearly half supply. He's trying to clear a path for his mutas to get out with wings and banes. Unfortunately, there's a lot of ghosts here. The mutas getting involved. Cloak. He can still do the splash damage, but the ghosts just don't take the hits. Maybe the queens can get involved with transfusing the ultras, possibly. Maybe. 
pathogen glands on the way for the infestors. Maru starting to make a concerted push forward. Breaks the knees of one of the queens. What's in there? Some marauders? Where is Cyril even really mining from? Uh, we'll have to find out after this one. Pulls the Thors back. The Ultras make quite a big target for those ghosts. Knock down two. One more on the run. The Marauder drop. The only thing that, that it definitely does encounter is Mutalisks. The problem is the Mutalisks can get baited into the ghost shot. Snipes come off. He definitely has that on rapid fire. Infester is on the way. Plus three flyer attack is the choice. Oh, no! Ooh. Another painful ultraless death. As Maru marches. Securing the front, adding turrets, sensor towers. It feels like Cyril's running out of time to deal with this, but there is no army off to the right flank. And these SCVs feeling a little bit abandoned right now. It looks like a planetary will be ripped to shreds by the cracklings. Adrenal glands complete. Banelings? There's like 10 banelings to kill two ghosts, which is better than zero ghosts, but still, still not a super great trade. Liberators. I mean, they're just, they're just turret emplacements at this point as are the turrets, to help deal with the mutas that will eventually try to deal with the liberators as the wheel turns. Here come the ghosts, though. On the right flank, another command center has landed. I don't know where he's getting them from. A changeling is involved as well. The ghosts and Thors will drive back the ultra mainling as it tries to navigate around the myriad high and low grounds of the map. The infestors have hit the field. I believe, yeah, Maru catches them in the scan. He's re-securing. We're going to the Maru action cam for a moment. We'll have to see a whole lot of Banelings. Sees the Infester. Starts EMP Shockwave upgrade. The uh, enhanced Shockwaves for the EMP radius as soon as he sees those Spellcasters. Gets a look. Even sniping one of them will make it a lot easier as he can't change chain the Fungals then. Gets another Hatchery. Those Hatcheries really need an armor upgrade at this stage of the game as the Marauders are just punching through them. More reinforcements on the way. Cyril actually has 25 Mutalisks. Which... That is 50 supply with plus 2 going on plus 3 flyer attack. Uh, and also has plus 1 carapace. So that's a lot committed to the Mutas. How many ghosts? There are 16 ghosts, 8 little mines, 2 Thors. It feels like approximately 80% of Maru's army can nearly instantly kill the Mutalis. Which is not great. If he spreads them correctly, maybe the magic box, aka stop position over the Thors, can minimize splash damage. Oh, the Infester sliding through the scan, but not sniped off. Did he notice it? Well, he did now. Well, that's not... What, what am I... No. Nope. Well, that was very sad. There's another infester. Nuclear missile in production. Mutas. Those are building armor turrets, but plus three attack mutas do a lot of damage. So do ghosts with snipe, but in a more single target manner. These mutas can definitely fight turrets. There's no amount of armor. Well, there is an amount of armor, but you can't get the amount of armor you need to deal with that. Sniping the ghost academy might actually be a play. Oh, God. Well, speaking of ghosts... An army waiting outside the front. He knows where it is. It's just dealing with this is so tough. He finished up a nuke. There is a burrowed zergling preventing the landing of a command center. Just, you know, regulations. Meanwhile, the concerted push trying to make it over the high ground here. On to the other side of Cyril's map. The, it continues. The battle continues. Cyril has lost 10,000 more minerals and 5,000 more gas. This is not tenable. He needs to win fights and deny bases. He cannot continue trading at this rate. 
I'm not a mathematician, but losing twice as much gas as your opponent doesn't seem great for your long-term investment options. Serral needs a decisive fight soon. He does have money in the bank for now, but Maru is, is continually mining from his bases. He hasn't been denied outright. That is a lot of liberators. The ghosts are all clumped up at the back, but they are at the back. The ghost spread trying to make its way through. Where are the overseers? I can't believe it's not butter. The spread is so good. And he's sniping Banelings, the infester, approximately 15 seconds. Wait, he gets a catch on some of the ghosts. Does he though? Yes, no, maybe. Uh, reinforcements on the way. Got most of the medevacs. Ghost cloak though, he ran out of detection. Maru down to 150 supply. The battle kind of peters out here. 11 ghosts lost to 650. Is there nuclear launch? Over the top. Easily, should be easily sniped off. Yes. A few overseers. Of course they have speed. More ghosts dying. Always so dramatically. Despite the winning of this fight, Cyril is still struggling on supply. He can't get enough minerals. He can't bring this all the way to the production. There's too many backstops here for Maru. What does the income look like? Cyril still way ahead in that. He really wanted to get that center base. This is probably the most obvious target. The, the base right up the middle where he's been fighting. These infestors keep just... I think Maru saw it for a second. Technically, you can see it. You just have to look very closely and scans are a lot more reliable. There's a lot of bases to work with on the map. Liberators, a Venn diagram of freedom. Freeing the drones of the obligation to ever mine from there one way or another. This infester is waiting for its opportunity. It, it oh, never mind. Opportunity over. It died. Some corruptors showing up. Ultralis on the back line. One from the right flank. The snipes trying to come off. Corruptors not there. Splash damage interrupting the snipes. Two ultras down. Two to go. Thor just chopped to pieces. The Ultralins, some of them bruised and battered, and some of them you can't really turn your back or the ghosts will line up a shot. But Maru beaten down to 120 supply. Cyril at 130. Neither of them with enough minerals to rebuild. Queens driving back Whittle Mines in a weird exchange. Scan spotting the army as he's probably already dropped mules on all the bases he can. No? Surprising. But, oh wow. Yeah. Well, he definitely dropped mules at some point. Oh, this base. There you go. The, oh my god. Oh, that was how many? That's like 40 SCVs. That's, each page is 24. Okay, that's 30 SCVs. Oh my, oh. <laughs> oh god, mules. The mule peak. Mount mule. Rises from the income graph. As oftentimes these late games uh, are dependent on it. Unfortunately, drones not nearly as good at the transfer here because you can't fly your hatcheries, much to the dismay of Zergs everywhere. And suddenly, what looked to be an even game is quickly sliding away from Sarah. As as soon as he lost the income lead. He lost the supply lead. Uh, uh, a single fungal from the back with the ghost retreat. The banelings did very well. The ultras just chopping through, but only one remains. A dramatic 27 minutes. But... Cyril's at 116 supply. He can't drag himself out of it. There's no, there's no more minerals. He, he, he's not enough. Uh, he's building seven infestors, which is not a good sign. It is better than nothing, and the infestors are of course great, but. Just Infester is not nearly as effective as Just Ghost.
Fungal, no infested Terrans. Fungal is not what it was back in the not so good old days. At some point, he got a greater spire, but I have yet to see a brute. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Well, Maru knows. Unfortunately, ghosts also counter broodlords. Oh, decent fungals. He's trying to get the brood snipe. The EMP across most of the board. A couple broodlords finish. Maybe a transfuse or two. The only anti air is the go. Wait, what? Was that a widow mine? If he can interrupt the snipes, the brood micro and a fungal. It, it, ah! Oh, he's, he's trying to, it, ah! 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 Oh, uh, Marauders, well, the Widow Mines are coming. The ghost can just shoot him, yeah. Unfortunate, oh, he's going to Widow Mine drop underneath the Broods! And Broods can't run! Oh, God. Uh, for a second, it looked like Sarah might be able to drive this back, but he's out of energy, he's out of minerals, he's out of supply. Is he going to manually detonate on these? Oh, no. Wait a second, though. Cyril's mining from this top left. He's actually got a surprising amount. His income is a, is slightly ahead. Ve mm, ah. <laughs> Don't look. Being able to mine from about three bases right now is... He's on life support. From his... Marine, Marauder, Maghost, and Medivac, the four M's of Maru's victory. And we're all tied up. I don't, like, Muta Ultra? If you can pummel their bases, and you can pound their economy into submission. And don't get too excited, everyone. Calm down. It's only game two. Then that is when it succeeds. The problem was Maru was never at risk of losing his production or his economy. He lost extraneous bases. He lost battles. But never the war. Cyril gave it a shot for the Lisks, but I think... Hydra will proceed most of the rest. So we've narrowed it down. Roaches, probably not. Ultras, almost certainly not. Mutas, jury's still up. Jimmy, can we go to the game? People want to see games. They don't want to see my face. They don't want to see your, your... No, don't talk to me about how the StarCraft II story is just replacing a dictator with his son. Don't tell me that's a pair... We've had this discussion. Nobody... Don't worry about it. One one. We'll see. Maru has definitely laid off the proxy racks lately. Probably because he realized that just making ghosts is also a very, very good strategy. This game will start out the most standard. Well, game one, Cyril did do hatch first into roaches. It wasn't like roaches right off the bat. We're on Berlingrad, which is a much smaller map than Glittering Ashes. A lot more open space to work with for the Zerg, but a lot less distance uh, to wrap around the Terran, so. It is, I think it's categorized as a rush map, such as it is, but even... It still is not... It, it's no steps of war, but nothing is, so... More like two steps, and then you're in your opponent's base. Which was... You know, Terrans were big fans of that one. There's a reason Terran won about 50% of games for about six months. Till we realized, huh, maybe be making a barracks before a depot 
seems a little quick. <laughs> Don't we all miss the days of Terrence just floating to gold bases and then making more marines than anyone could deal with? Those were the good old days. Oh my god, he lost a drone to the Reaper. You can't go out there, can you? What? I mean, there is a little caution sign. I should have known. Somebody put a little stepping stool there just for the those Reapers coming in before the game. Putting the boxes up against the edge. All right. Raph? These Reapers getting their own fancy entrances. Oh, comes back in. Queen's had enough. Goes right back out. Okay. A Roach Warren. It's looking very similar to game one for Sarah. Oh, is this a Hellbat push? Are you going to insult me? Okay. With a Hellbat push? Maru might. You know what? I think you break it out once per series. You gotta prove that the Hellbats are bad once a series. Oh, at least once a tournament, if not a series. And Hellbat, well, this is maybe a little more understandable, because usually Hellbats are bad just because they're not good. But here, he's running his... like, a semi-truck into a concrete wall, which is what roaches are against a Hellbat push. Um, yeah. Or he could just, you know, go right through the center. He's dropping on top. Yeah, the roaches are very bad. Yeah, this is this is a big problem. He's trying to... Uh, okay. Yeah, this is a total disaster for Maru. I, I think Cyril was ju just going for the roaches anyways, but he's feeling like Maru just handed him quite a gift. Yeah. Uh, this is very bad. Like, the roaches found the only unit less effective. Um. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Cyril's had 53 drones, by the way. It's not like he's all in at all. Like, this is... Did he just build an engineering bay on a tech lab? I mean, on a, on a reactor? You know those things don't fly. Don't tell me about it! Hold on. Is he really trying? He's blocking with his reactor NG bay. Technically has more HP quicker than the other buildings you build, but like... Cancels it. Okay. Well, I think it was intentional. Not 100%. You know what? So Maru won't die because Sarah wasn't going to just lean on the roaches killing him. Last time, Maru didn't die either to the roaches, but it was very different. Last time, 3cc was done. Last time, he had Metavax with Stim. This time, Cyril's up 25 drones. He's got three bases. Maru just finishing his third CC. Somehow, the Metavax lived through this. The upgrades are not there. Like, Cyril's getting into the base. He sees everything. He sees the uh, third command center. He sees the racks. He saw that there were no NG bays, at least at the front. Or he would have killed them, so. There's a spire and a baneling nest on the way. This is the perfect time for Mutas. Not when your opponent already has built in anti air with good upgrades. Not as a desperation move, but instead when they have minimal anti-air and they're desperately trying to catch up economically. They're going to be stretched thin. Their anti-air defenses are going to be lacking. They may even try to send out things like marines. I think... Wait, did he notice the spire? No, he built it right at the front, which sometimes would be risky, but is very unlikely to be scouted here. A dozen mudas on the way. Cyril about to blindside Maru. Yeah, that's a changeling. Okay. Oh, no. 
Oh my. If, only, if it couldn't get any worse. He sees the medevacs headed out. Oh no. Oh. Uh... Well, medevac, the mutas, find the banshees. He already knows that there are multiple. Yep. Well, this is an utter, he, ne he didn't even rebuild the wall yet. Killing the turrets, the mutas will break open the main, which is the door is actually just open, so that kind of solves that problem. Down goes the turret, the SCVs are vulnerable, another round of lings into the third. Cyril is ransacking the production, he rotates around, a single tank isn't gonna cut it. Turret will easily go down to the mutas or lings, dealer's choice. Maru on the run, mainling speed actually not quite done. But still, for Maru, not going to be very fun. And I think this will no longer be tied up at 1-1. One one. Uh, and as Cyril pretty soon will put a bow on it and say, Get out of my game, son. I, but Maru does not, because Maru's like, I'm going to micro these marines until you have literally five bendlings for each one. Um, somehow Maru's going to live through this and win. This is just typical Maru. Mm, no, 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 not, no, wait, yes, no. So Maru crashed directly into the roach wall with that one. That was not good. That was, that was, uh, that was partially the Hellbats being a mediocre choice and partially almost worst case scenario. Sometimes when you're playing a chess match like that, um, it just, yeah, that, that was, that was unlucky. I don't even think Sarah was expecting Hellbats. He was just appreciative of the donation, is how that ended up. And that puts Maru back in the lead. Nope. There's only two ways it could go, and that was not it. That puts so edit and post. We're gonna edit and post. Yes, we do that. Pride of Eltaris. Utilizing the new advanced technology, relatively new, you can have more than three levels. There's actually up to like 12 in the editor, but this map has not one, not two, not three, but four separate levels. Reapers love him. Make Reapers relevant again with this one quick trick. Yeah. So that, that, that combined with the platform layout of the bases means we do have a tendency for more drawn out games on this map. It's, it's a macro map, which is a nice way of saying it's almost impossible to attack when you're attacking up a ramp, uh, on one of the longest rush distances in the map pool. So, settle in. Even if you were to go for a pool first, I'm pretty sure a uh, the reactor's almost done on the racks. Especially if he goes reactor first. Well, in that case, it doesn't really matter because here we are. You just skip the reaper. This may be a no rush game. Like, uh... At least until five or six minutes. It's looking like a 2 one, one I take it back. Okay. Maru. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a barracks. It did not register. He's building three wrecks. 
Okay, well, I guess we just have to watch the production tab and take some notes. Because walking bio units across the map does seem like a precarious proposition. And this is before... I bet Cyril is expecting Maru to go 3cc. Maru knows that Cyril is expecting Maru to go 3cc. So if he just goes Mass Marine... He gets a second... What year is it? Hellbats? We're going back in time, is what we're doing. We're going from, like, a 3-2-1-1 to a Hellbat push to 3 Rex Marine with combat shields and stim. We're going back... This is like 2010. Does he make Marauders? I don't... <laughs> The question will be if Cyril scouts it in time, because it should be easily smashed by... Well, he's not going to be able to get Banelink speed, but just having any sort of warning is all you need with this. You need spine crawlers, more queens. The obvious choice is Banelings, because stim damage is permanent. Cyril will very likely expect Matavax. Okay. Alright. So, the Overlord's coming in. That factory timing is incredibly... So, he's gonna see everything. He knows. Mainling Nest starts immediately. I... I mean, all the cards are on the table now. Thing is, mainlings are not a counter to marines. They just make them uncomfortable when they get close, as we've seen Clem demonstrate. The marine... it... Alright, they're splitting up a bit. Cyril's at only 41 drones. So he has not gotten particularly greedy. There's just 25 marines walking across... Like, what am I watching? We need banelings. Uh, Cyril's not building any banelings. Is he just attacked? Okay. The real Wings of Liberty move would just be walk backwards. Nope. Stims. Target fire. The queen holding the line. That stim is permanent damage. Banelings showing up. The queens will drive it back. Can't really go much further. They get joint pain. Dozen more drones on the way. Third command center just now starting. I wonder how much Cyril uh, has played against this. Because I have not seen any Terrans try... Like, this is a TVP build. You just try to do a stim timing, hope they're light on the units. But Zergs usually have queens, right? That's kind of their thing. So the watchtower in the middle of the map does give a lot of vision. If Maru finds the timing before Bane Speed, where Cyril's been droning, there's still potential here. He still has a lot of marines. He didn't lose that many marines. Double medevac done, which exponentially increases the power of these marines. Gonna scan. Spot the tumors, knock them out. Actually missed the mark on a couple of these. He's out of there. Back to the watchtower. Or or not. Oh. Okay, no, maybe. <laughs> uh, it's a bit of an awkward, because these are vision blockers on either side. So if you don't have the watchtower, you can't actually see the other side from the ground. More units coming out. There's nothing to deal with this head on. There's no... The queens are the only anti. And Maru recognizing that is already starting Liberator production. More scans. Plus one is done. Maru only. Will Cyril commit to defending the fourth? The tanks are really jammed in there. A great choice. 
a cancel on the fourth, so the objective has been completed for Maru. Oh, but a smash from the back! Looking for the flank, the tanks doing pretty well. The Marines actually survived. The tanks taken out. Not the overwhelming victory I think Cyril was hoping for. Especially on losing that base. It was a victory. But it cost all the Banelings. Yeah, a costly one. And the other hatchery was started only after Maru started pushing, so he doesn't just have something done. He can intercept the Marines in the middle of the map. Without Medivax, the Ling's going to be able to uh, win the fight. Medivax coming up to save the day for whoever's left behind. A couple Liberators looking to severely annoy drones. And possibly Queens. No spore crawlers. I don't know if there are any. There's one spore crawler on the entire map. Oh no. Oh god. And so it begins. Liberation is at hand. Even like even if the queens are in position. Oh god. <laughs> oh, no. Oh god. Oh my. No cancel at the front, and that does matter right now. Oh my, he killed both. Oh no. He's just, wow. It's, it, it's bad. It's, it's real bad. Look at the supply. Oh my. Oh no, not another one. He gets a transfuse. It's not just how much this has killed, but how much attention and time this has bought. Maru shifting around. He's got 2 2 on the way. Cyril has 2 2 quicker, so Cyril can bounce back. But his, his, his queen production is lowered, or his larva production because of his queens is lowered. Uh, as the queens have had to go wandering around in these nasty liberation zones. Maru has a fourth command center on the way. How many racks up? Five racks. Adding on a second factory. I assume Widow Mines are not too far up. Oh, these tank positions. Whoa. Oh. Mmm. Maru. And, and you can't even really see the Marines back there. I. There is no range in, in Cyril's army. He's got Lings and Banes. And wherever the Queens can get to. He's getting some Hydras now. A gold mineral base at the front, but... Cyril just getting dragged around the map. I said this was more of a macro map, but Maru is proving me a little wrong on this one. As he's found the locate, he's found the pain points here, and they're pretty much anywhere but the center. Cyril's looking for the big smash, but he's already killed the ba and he just gets out. He just leaves. I mean, yeah. There you go. Cyril has a hive on the way. He does have the gold base now, so maybe... Cool. Yeah, not having a fourth for a while is pretty rough. Taking on the rocks that were delaying things. Maru starting to move his way around. So right now is an upgrade advantage. Slightly, but it is something. So we can fight on the ground quite efficiently. Cyril needs the hive. I don't think he can he can actually push a base, but he can definitely hold for now. Plus two, now finishing up. Banelings crashing in. Marines split every which way. Tank sieging, widow mines burrowed, and suddenly, that's usually how it goes. The the Zerg tries to win the beginning of the fight so hard there is no drawn out engagement because the longer the fight goes on, the better it gets for Terran. Ninety percent of the time, tanks keep firing, medevacs keep healing, widow mines recharge or get burrowed, reinforcements come into the fray. Almost all of the drawn-out engagements favor a Terran, but if you're able to smash through and force them to have a total retreat, that's when you see Zergs with a chance. 
Unfortunately, Cyril not able to compete. He loses another hatchery without a battle. There's still Widowmond. Uh, Maru now knows there are Vipers. <laughs> in the most obvious possible manner. I don't think Cyril has Overlord speed either, so his Overseers will lag behind. More mines on the ground. The Bio Army continues. The Vendaya scans. Cyril's struggling to find anywhere to go right now. He's got Hydra's on the way. Hydra Ling Bane. Better against the high-tech armies. Worse against a, a, a spread-out bio army. Right now, it's a bit of a mixed bag for both sides. Cyril's trying to hold on. The Queen's having a tough time. There is no Lurker Den, but the upgrades are about as good as they're ever going to get, and Cyril cannot afford to lose any more bases. In fact, his Hydra's Den is here. Here we go. And no, we don't. The tank's still shelling. Cyril, this is it's going to be decided here. He's gonna go. He's running out of time to decide. Where are the Vipers? The Vipers are required. I'm looking for any other sides. Nothing. Maru trying to fight. He's getting plus three. He's trying to draw Cyril into this. And if he gets the base, that's probably the game. The Vipers, they may have gotten EMPs, looking for snipes, trying to fire a shot. One ghost gonna draw the army and the Vipers are showing up to the party. He gets a couple of the ghosts at the front. This battle will continue being the point of contention. Looks like everything on both sides, the EMPs maybe? Can he land them? He gets a couple yanks, the ghosts get drawn in and murdered. 175 to 182, everything going into the front. Plus three, plus three, finishing. Malru now at maximum upgrades for his bio army. More vipers. Consuming the hatch that is under attack. I guess if he loses it, loses it anyways, he loses the game very likely. More Widowmines. The queen's wandering in. The vipers are everything here. The vipers need, like, whatever they do, it better be good. Blinding cloud, but EMP counters. The front line is blind, but the rest is completely able and ready to fire. Well. And Maru ties it up. Two to two. A dominant game for Maru. Not giving Cyril any breathing room. That was painful as a Zerg player to watch. And as a Terran, mm. 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 some of my best friends are Terran, okay? Just don't, just don't let them talk too long. Cyril getting beat up in that last match. But there's a reason we play best of sets. Get another chance. But Jimmy says it's time for a quick advertisement as we go into game five. Uh, a word from our sponsors. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. I'm Winsor, and I'm here to tell you all about exciting ways you can support content you love. Are you like Winter? I have no idea what the King of Battles tournament is. I have no capability to Google things or know what Team Liquid or Liquipedia are. And I rely on you and other YouTubers. Did you say other YouTubers? Blazing right past it. I rely on you and other YouTubers to tell me when good games are happening for the fans. So make sure to smash that like button as it's the only thing anyone cares about anymore and subscribe so that way no it's not that other time maru and Cyril played it's a new it's different it's different and it's still good okay people are like oh my god it's the same thing as before all right my dad has been listening to classic rock since it wasn't classic led zeppelin is still led zeppelin in 2021 and so what I'm trying to say is even if Maru and Cyril are playing and they're 
58 years old, you're like, wow, they've gotten a lot worse. But you can still watch the games from now. And when you come back in 28 years and I have 10 million subscribers, you're like, I remember watching this when it was live, but I don't remember it because my attention span was 20 seconds at the time. And, and I didn't even notice that this has gone so far off track because of the beautiful segue back into talking about Amazon Prime. Did you know with Amazon Prime, you can get Prime Gaming and subscribe to a streamer of your choice on Twitch every month for free. So subscribe right now or you're losing money from me. So remember, with Amazon Prime, we know where you live. You told us. Thank you. Good night. Oh, you guys were sticking around? We're back to the King of Battles 2. Grand Finals, all tied up between Maru and Sarah. So far, I gotta say, it does seem like Maru is the more stable player. And Cyril has mostly taken advantage of Maru being caught unprepared. I know that sounds like a bit of a contradiction, but Cyril's wins have come off of Maru being off balance. Whereas, if the game just kind of plays out, Maru seems like he's in the lead. And we're on Blackburn, which is definitely a, a Terran-centric map. Easily cut in half. Cyril going to acknowledge that by stoning with a pull first. Remember on, uh, what was it, Glittering Ashes? The pull first. I mean, it didn't do great. I think Maru, Maru's micro is just too good for pull first to do much. Unless he goes command center first. Which is not the case here. He's even SCV. Wow. I think Maru is getting more confident as the series goes on. Last time I saw these two, Cyril did take it. Just overwhelming Maru, especially in the late game, but that has not been the case so far. The SCV scout is going to see the Zerglings. Is it just the two? Just two links. Now, he doesn't know that for sure, because the first two links will drive him away. He saw the expansion timing, though. That's the key here. He saw when the hatchery was being built, and there are some basic mathematics, all the right? numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. There's some basic math you gotta do, which is essentially you can't get a hatchery, pat like, earlier than a certain time if you're building X amount of units. So, on seeing those lings and seeing that hatchery and seeing this queen, Maru now can do that basic math and say, No, there aren't five roaches coming for me right now. No, it's not going to be a one base night. No, Twitch chat, stop telling me what he's doing and, and maybe use your eyes. Anyways, 3cc. Oh my god. This is Maru's reaction to your early pool. He says, oh, so a third command center it is. <laughs> when you're ahead, get more ahead. Just the same as the last time, Cyril. Going to be behind on his third base. Honestly, I'm not sure what the pull first is meant to accomplish. It was an ideal scenario in the first game where it was unscouted and the reaper was across the map it doesn't get any better than that i guess it's just supposed to kind of dictate the pace of the game and keep the terran guessing but maru just shrugs it off and builds a third command center i mean Cyril rarely follows it up with another big all-in i feel like that's the intent you're supposed to, like, he does have a pool. He could go for a bunch of roaches or ling speed, and he's building eight lings now, but... And that's a bane ling nest. Like, he may do a bane all in. Uh, you gotta keep him guessing, otherwise Mara's just gonna get ahead. 
When was the last time you saw a mainling bust? Okay, like, I saw the- I- 14 this week in the diamond- No, mainling busts are so 2000 and late, alright? We do roach busts now. That's- that's the way to kill them. Ravagers can actually reliably kill buildings without dying. The problem is both these things are countered by one banshee, so... Maru built a viking and then one banshee just in case. Viking picked up one kill. A lot of hellions. Now I'll tell you as a zerg in this prediction, in this prediction, in this position. You're kind of, now you have to play uh, keep away. You have to play catch up. You have to hope you can block everything the Terran throws at you and still somehow be ahead economically. Oh my god, that grenade. Does he not have a transfuse? Okay. What a save! Still a little closer than it needed to be. The Banshee has been revealed. So, Cyril has a good idea of what's happening. There's just nothing he can do. Like, he has to sit in his... There is no way to attack Maru. Not until their tech kicks in. He has to sit back, and he has to bolster his economy, and hope he can rule the mid-game. Which, he's done a pretty good job of. So, a fourth base is on the way for Cyril. He's gonna be about a minute behind on the upgrades. I can't stress, like, Maru makes it... Maru has been the singular source of Terran not getting buffs um, for so long. He's been ruining it. Him and like uh, maybe three or four other Terrans have been ruining it for everyone else. Because everyone who isn't them, besides Cure, Cure doesn't really count in this one, um, controls their units so disgustingly well they make Terran look good and not underpowered and unable to win anything. Um, or so the, my, those Terran friends say. So, And Maru has been doing it for 11 years. Quite literally. Oh my god. Do I need to commentate, or did my commentary already cover this? Yeah, well, there goes that. Big Ling counterattack. The Marines. Oh my god, the split, but he actually lets the Banes in, or does he? I'm not even sure the Banes help here. Okay. They might if they kill all the SCVs. Yeah, 16 SCVs. Alright. Wait, oh no, well. Meanwhile, the tank... 20 SCVs. This counterattack was pretty devastating. And Cyril held on the other side, because Maru, of course, was looking at this. A precision counter strike. I can't I can't say that without the anyway. 21 SCVs is definitely more than should have been lost to that. And now Cyril up 25. That's exactly what he needed. That was on the dot. Perfect counterattack. Maru's forced to come back. His aggression stalled out, and his defenses have to be rebuilt. So Cyril not only ground out a lead economically, but also an army supply. He is now even, actually slightly ahead on army supply. When before, uh, he was struggling to keep up, and usually against a Terran who's left untouched, their production just ramps up so quick, it's very hard to keep up if you're building drones as well. So right now, Cyril has put himself in a very good spot. And that has turned this around. 92 drones! Okay, okay, okay. Don't get too high on your supply. Well, I, okay, on worker supply. Army supply is fine. I... I can see how that would be slightly misleading. But a hive is on the way. The gold base is mining. Cyril, 
going for everything else. The production tab is covering an inordinate amount of the screen right now, and not just because of how Terran works. But Maru, not gonna give it up quite yet. Strikes back on the goal, kills five drones. Still 91. There are more than when I last looked. Maru knows that if you can't fight head-on, you go around. And if uh, you can't go around, you fight head-on. We saw that on Glittering Ashes. It was a great example of um, Maru being a very flexible player. I, of course, Cyril is nearly identical as Zerg, so... Maru's supply is still looking very good. 70 SCVs is a perfectly capable number. We're still early enough in he's mining from his main. So while Cyril ground out a huge income lead after the counterattack, he still didn't quite have the tech with which to close the game out or anything like that. This is a bit of an optimistic top center base. 2-2 is finishing for Maru. Another huge counterattack, but this time... With uh, Hydroling Bing. Oh no, Widow Mines. With Drilling Claws. Hit some drones. Gonna drag. Oh no, the whole army. Cyril just F dude it. Almost. I don't know if that was an F2, but he brought back an entire army to deal with this. And that. Maru's gonna know. Maru saw it. And that gives him more space. He's sending out a revolving door of Widowmine drops. As soon as they pop out, they get picked up and sent across the map. And if even one of these Widowmine drops finds a big chunk of drones, then Cyril has lost a lot of his initiative. There are lurkers on the way. The Ghost Academy is done. Lurker done, completed. Adrenal glands. We're kind of just checking off all the tech tree boxes. Uh, trying to fight heads up. Maru, Widow Mines, find a lot of the Banelings, but not nearly enough. Crashing through into the third. The Hydra's in the back line. The Banelings still tanking a lot of the damage from the tanks a little ironically. Metavax up to the north side of things. There's a Widow Mine drop still loaded up here. Another round of Banelings making its way through. This is all before the Lurker upgrades. Not that he has any Lurkers with this. He's fighting heads up with a larger army, and Cell right now is winning with it. Oh no, the Metavax! Oh, he's trying to consolidate, but it's just not working. Cyril, 11 lurkers. That's his finishing blow here. And then one Hydro, who is very uncomfortable with what all his friends are doing. Guys, guys, if you could just... Okay. <laughs> All your friends are turning into lurkers. Why aren't you? If my friends turned into lurkers, I'd totally do it. Anyways, speaking of, the lurkers will burrow. No adaptive talents. Plus one missile attacks is done. Anti-air. Oh. Oh. That did not go nearly as well as I thought it would. I think Cyril had the same thoughts there. Maru with a stronghold and just bloody as half the lurkers. He only... Okay, he only killed two. But that was not making any headway. The ghosts are on the field. Maru very good about having them in a timely manner. So, now we may see the potential downsides of taking all these bases with all these drones. Cyril may mine out much earlier. And uh, all these games have been Maru being more cost-effective, and this is no exception, though it isn't nearly as much of a disparity as the previous ones. The creep spread is now stretching nearly to Maru's gold. The middle bases, the pseudo-islands, they're not quite islands, but they're pretty damn close. Those may end up being the most important ones. Cyril is now maxed. This is the hardest part of the game for a Zerg player. Let's be clear here. Cyril is maxed. He has all the army he wants. But does he fight? Or does he contain? Like, does he try to kill Maru? Or does he try to deny bases? Because if he fights and he loses, he may end up losing the War of Attrition. But you gotta fight. 
At least that's what he's saying. It is a hard map to actually lay down the killing blow. Maru is obviously quite entrenched here. EMP hits one out of two Vipers. There's still some potency there. There's a Lurker drop making its way around the north side. Snipe picks up another one. Honestly, I'm not... The, the Lurker drop could be intensely annoying. And Maru is not max, so he still needs his workers, his income. It's very important. But that is kind of an expensive drop as well. <laughs> oh, Maru. Uh, beautiful split, just to clean up that. I'm sorry, that took me by surprise. I sh it shouldn't have, but... There are no formation keys besides your mouse, just to be clear, in, in StarCraft 2. Lurkers are much more expensive than Widow Mines, and you're less effective. The lurkers on the outside. Uh, yeah. If Terran can do it, so can you. Nope. Nope, that. No. Minerals, the hardest wall in the game. Gonna pick up the ghosts? Oh my. Yep. At the last. Oh my. This... Uh, uh. Sarah lost 7,000 more minerals and 2,800 more gas now. So, he tried to kill Maru. Maru, not dead. That he just doesn't have the uh, cost-effective options that Terran does. You can't blame him for trying. But Maru... Okay, one SCV. Why can't they attack air units if they can repair? Th Shut up. Shut up. Nobody asked you. Another lurker drop. But it just, it really is a lot more risk than the Widow Mine drop, just in terms of, turn, terms of cost. Oh my God, this has been a long series. Yeah, excuses. Maru's still microing perfectly and you can't even speak Englando. Meanwhile, a tank up to the high ground, but more tanks on the low. The rocks are eating so much damage, he's going to lose a couple dozen supply of Ling Hydra. And immediately rebuild. There was a, a lurker drop. It's still working on it. Maru is not maxed. Like, Cyril is, is trying to win the game. He's uh, he, Make no mistake, he wants to win. Before Maru's able to max out, he knows the army is spread thin. There's no counterattacks. Everything Maru has is on his side of the map. He wants to keep it there. More Banelights crashing into the planetary. There is no building armor, but the ghosts turn it around with the snipes. A lurker in the natural. Eight SCV kills in the last minute. Not a critical number, but not very happy for Maru. Oh, he saves a lurker. <laughs> Amusingly enough, there are some Vikings here. Oh my, um... Well, an unceremonious end for, for that particular Lurker drop. Uh, <laughs> the Medivacs are out of energy. I'm not sure if he EMP'd them or if there's just been that much steaming. Maybe a bit of both. You can EMP your own units, by the way. It is something that happens. That's a lot of main lane. Crashing through. Planetary obliterated. Ghosts on the run. Couple more tanks, though. We'll take a big bite out of the rest. Meanwhile, one Zergling. Not quite enough. Cyril's now mining in one way or another from the uh, center bases. At this point, it's starting to get, so a base has, what's the number, like 20,000 minerals, and I'm more confident in this one, 4,500 gas. That's the more important number. Cyril has mined 6K more gas, but he has lost almost an entire extra base of gas as well. So, If he does not hold on to both corner bases, or not corner, I'm used to them being corner bases, center bases, he will lose the War of Attrition at this rate. 
This is one of those games where it looks impossible to break the Terran right up until the Banelings crash through, find the hits, and the Terran's at 100 supply. We've seen those before, usually against Serral. It, it is one bad fight away from production being not nearly enough. But at the same time, wow, what a tank line. Like... Almost over half the map is covered with tanks and siege. Where do you go? Of course, relatively thinly. Uh, I, I think Clem can tell you about Maginot lines here, but I'm not entirely... If, I don't believe Cyril has any tanks of his own. So that might be a sticking point. We could possibly see Neural Parasite, but... Down goes a hatchery. Sal no longer has access to those center bases. He now... Oh my god, those minerals. Not looking so great. Yeah, he's cut... Maru is climbing back. There's Neural... Whoa, 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 whoa. He is going... It's happening. Oh god, the ghost hit squad. Does he have a nuke? He has no nukes. Not that he needs them. Ghosts themselves are pretty good. He's... Is he really gonna go for the Hail Mary? Are we at that point? Of Neural Parasite being the option? Like, if he finds an area without detection, without scans, which is... Um, optimistic. That is a... That is an interesting graph here. Cyril is out of fresh bases. He's got, what, a thousand gas. Yeah, we gotta start counting. 300, 90, 800. Maru on the other end, 2,000, 2,000. He's gotta break him. Infestor Broodlord. Welcome back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is he gonna go Mass Thor and a fusion core? Maru, anything but a boar. Fusion core! What is it? Advanced ballistics. Okay, it's not battle cruisers. Not a... The tanks. You need a scan on. Oh my. If anyone knows how to break this, Cyril is... It's Cyril, all right? Like, <laughs> Cyril, teach me. He's making Broodlords. He's got Infestors. I think Maru is throwing away his tanks. Yeah, nuke on the way. Blue flame. Hellbats to tank the Broodlings. Punching bags, their appropriate use. The scans. So the Lurkers will hit some of the ghosts, but not enough. That is a feudal age of broodlords. Wrong game, Sarah. The Thors, though, in high impact mode. Oh, the neural parasite is for the Thors. Oh, the brood legs! Nope. No! Why did you come back? I told you to. I didn't want to see your face in this house again. Broodlords a little awkward with their broodling range. Alright. Advanced ballistics on the way. Queens laying down creep tumors. Oh my god, then. Drives back the static defense. Not so static after this. He's trying to bait. Or he just doesn't want medevacs anymore. Even. Wait, did you really waste a parasitic bomb on that? Maru probably smiling. Maru's always smiling, but. Thinking about your impending death. All right. Well, oh, gets a liberator. More meta. Where did they come from? All right. Things slowed down. 
Cyril now willing to push the issue up to the high ground. Another nuke. Driving things back. Mara was trying to mine from a... Are there no corruptors? There they are. Oh yeah, the nuke. The changelings obliterated. <laughs> Not the... <laughs> Could he, this ultralisk impaled definitely demoralizing everyone. Oh, so hard to get the broodlings to actually get something done here. Wow, these armies are so costly. Cyril's army is 9,400 minerals and 8,200 gas. Maru at 7,553. Sounds like a lot less, but these are insanely costly armies. Neither of them can even hope to rebuild this. And it looks like maybe things are happening. Big fungals, blinding cloud, ghosts caught at the back. Another parasitic bomb. High impact doors trying to punch through. They disengage. Everybody can heal and repair to some extent. What happened here? Did a command center just burn? Oh. He's going to try to put... Is he... Okay, he's going for the tanks. If he gets rid of the tanks, then the infestors get involved. Where are the ghosts? Ah! Oh, why are they here? Oh, no! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Where did they come? The ghost just went on a special mission and came back the wrong direction. How many? He's only lost seven ghosts. How many are left? Nine ghosts. I thought that was going to be way worse than it was. Yeah, it seemed good, but yeah, the infestors were ambitious. He's he's consuming. Whoa! Does he? No, don't. No, don't. Don't be that guy. The EMP. So many broodlings doing almost nothing. He's just gonna fight the fungals. I don't... Blinding Cloud on the Thor is actually a good exchange there. Caught on the ramp. So many broodlings. Oh my god. A legion of broodlings each time. How many broodlords? He's got 18 broodlords. Oh, he's been doing a very good job with them. The broodlings just unleashed, but the Hellbats kind of just spontaneously combust them. Just like the Thor spontaneously combusted the Viper. Oh, uh, he's just pushing through. Meanwhile, the Venn Diagram of Freedom here. He burrows the infestors away. There's, is there a scan? Neuroparasite finds one Thor. Broodlord fighting EMP on the infestors. Overseer looking for more. Broodlord pounded into submission. Corruptors not nearly enough to knock down even, even the Metavax. And the ghosts will win the day. The Broodlord count cut down. And the Thors will survive. Cyril has been mining from the top center and the bottom center during all this. But he's lost so much. He's lost 16,000 gas and 44,000 minerals. Which is 16k and 6k more. He's back to Hydraling Bane. It's a single investor. I don't even know what you do with an investor now. Like... You neural parasite, a ghost, and EMP the other ghost. Yes, that's actually the highest percentage play, I think. Is if you are able to EMP his ghost. Which only Terran units can do, of course. Neither is able to really... Re oh my god, that's the best choke point you could ever... Oh my god! That ink doesn't get any better. Oh, the bubula of death and destruction! Oh my, Cyril just pounces and shreds Maru. I can't believe he went through there. What? A, a massive mistake. Disaster for Maru. Ooh. Cyril found an opportunity. Maru was probably feeling 
pretty good with that many Thors. It still was a costly fight, as everything is. But that was the only chance to kill those Thors. Oh my god, the lurkers. The lurkers need to burrow at some point. They do. They will. Sarah's pushing through. This is a fresh base, Maru. Deja vu, we fought here before. Sarah's had 24 workers, though. Can't, he needs to go further. He needs to... S 11 SCVs. What is the income? I mean, close to zero for both sides at this point. The armies... Sarah's only at 24 drones. Not like he can mine from them. Does he see it? You still, like, it's still one bad fight for either side. That Those tanks, we gotta rebuild those Vipers or Broodlords now. That's most of the drones. That is most of the drones. And the only real mining base? Yo, be careful. Be careful with those things. Those are expensive. Neural Parasite on the tank. Ghosts on the retreat. Tanks shelling through the Zerglings. More Neural Parasites. The tanks turn their coats and they turn on the other tanks, obliterating them. The snipes from the back line. Dude, no, the tank. Oh my god, he didn't kill the last tank. But, Cyril kills the, the orbital. There's still... How many orbitals? Six or... Okay, he's not gonna run out of orbitals. I bet. <laughs> Sorry. Investor. Wait, does he see it? What? Ah, uh, he whips out two fungals. A few more ghosts. Cyril grinding him down, chasing him back to his production. Cyril! He... What is the wing condition? These armies are so... Like, he neither can replace anything. Cyril has no gas income. Like... The, the, the hidden infestors. Cyril needs to mine some of this. There's a few thousand gas left to be dragged out of the center bases. Because cause remember... Okay, and this, this may become relevant. In order to eliminate a player from a game of StarCraft, you must kill all their buildings. All right. Lurkers... I don't know about this fight. He's already under the turrets. The lurkers. Oh, no. Oh, Cyril in almost exactly that location earlier in the match. Something very... He really wanted to deny the base, but he... Brad! Ah! What are you doing? Yeah, stupid turret. I hate it. Oh, well. Gets the turret. That was almost the exact location that earlier in the match that Cyril just dunked himself into a concave. I mean, I don't know what he saw that made him think that was a good fight to take, but... Here we are, 32 minutes in. This is a, as fresh as a base is gonna get. Cyril's, uh, well, the income now. The y-axis is forever skewed by the one time Maru dropped like 50 mules. Couple more lurkers need to be targeted. Oh, Neural Parasite! Beautifully done! Cyril trying to make up some ground? Did he lose the infestors at the end? I think he lost the infestors. That's just the lurkers. And then he doesn't have the army anymore. All he has are Zerglings. Wait, there's a Dropper Lord somewhere? Where is it? At this point, we gotta check all the stats. Okay. There's not two Lurkers and a Dropper Lord, believe it or not. Oh, Maru holds. <sighs> Over 100,000 resources. Cyril lost 55,000 minerals and 21,000 gas. There was nothing left. Lurkers just not... They're very tough to pick a fight with. Like... You don't want to start a fight with the Lurkers. You want to end it. 
unfortunately, you take a big risk by running off a creep. A little bit too big of a risk. And that risk will cost Serral match point. He's gonna have to go back to the spawning pool. Honestly, I thought Maru had all the initiative. But Serral with a beautiful counterattack. And, and keeping the initiative. The Broodlords were not enough. The Broodlords didn't do it. But... Uh, then the Thors walked through the Great Bubula. The Equalizer. Well, a storybook series. Maru on match point. Cyril. Cyril had every opportunity. It. Ghost Liberator. With some Thors and tanks. Has always been an incredibly powerful late game composition. It has always been nearly impossible to deal with a well controlled late game army. Cyril, better than. I think I'm confident saying anyone else, but Maru in the same category. All right, Maru, no proxy ranks. He's like, yeah, let's go late game. Oh, I'm exhausted. It's almost two hour series. Just of gameplay. It very likely will end up over two hours. Both these players average between uh, about 350 to 500 actions per minute. For 120 plus minutes. Ends up being a number about as many minerals as Cyril lost that last match. Which means nothing, but interesting though, right? It, it looks like a fallback build for both players. One Rax expand with a Reaper and an SCV scout and then hatch first into Zergling speed. Into Zergling speed. <clears throat> Into Zergling speed. Uh, <clears throat> is he going for a lair? <clears throat> Into Zergling speed. Oh no. I mean, maybe. Yeah. 20 seconds on Zergling speed isn't a big deal. Unless you happen to be against the best Terran in the world, who 20 seconds is enough time for his Reaper or Hellions to get another dozen kills. <laughs> of all the times for it to matter, I think this is it. Maru goes, I know, it sounds crazy, but three command center. This Maru guy. I'm starting to think he's a bit of a greedy player. So, just to speak of greed here. Maru has won 962 thousand dollars in just pure winnings in StarCraft 2. Cyril? 957,000. According to Liquipedia. So, whoever wins this will have won the most money in StarCraft 2. Maru holds it by 5k. The prize for this tournament for first place actually 
is uh, less than a 5k difference between first and second. So Maru's still in first, but it'll be closer if Cyril brings this back. Um, but, but Maru will still have a lead either way, just like he does in this series. It's about two, three, two, five. Less than five. Yes, mathematician. Or maybe Rogue is first, and I'm wrong about everything. Is he? Oh yeah, Rogue is first at 965k, but maybe not after this, but nope, still still not true. What did Rogue win? Everything for a while? like. Oh my, that's a long list. Yeah. Wow, there are three players within 10,000. Who would have thought between 955 and 965 would be such stiff competition? I don't... So surprisingly close between three currently active players. Thankfully, no Protoss. Well, here comes Maru. What do we have back here? One Hellions into the Metavax with Marines. Other caster things I'm going to fill in because honestly, obviously, I wasn't paying close attention. But where do we end up? Upgrades a little bit ahead for Maru. Uh, whereas Cyril has a fourth base, a handful more workers. It's got Baneling Speed, Hydralis Den. Gonna be going for that full mid-game composition. Plenty of queens. Brenda's knitting crew. Get out of here! How many times? It's always us with the anti-air. Even the, the Hydras don't even have as much range. They should get a range up. We should get a range upgrade. Why can't we? Don't we use the same spot? Shut up. Shut up, Susan. Shut up. We've been over this. Metavax driven away. Cyril consolidating his four. I, I'm telling you. Plus one right. That's all. Shut up. It's enough. We've tried it. Fourth commit. Wow, this is just... We're speed running into a macro game here. And and by that I mean even more than the previous ones. As... Well, is there an armory? Did Maru forget his armory? You don't make... I, remember, it's been over two hours. So maybe this is where the signs of exhaustion are showing. As Maru is laid on his armory, which means his 2-2 upgrades, he'll actually lose the advantage there. Cyril, on the other hand, should be able to start his 2-2 and flip the advantage with that finishing. Yeah, Maru had an opportunity to maintain the upgrade advantage, but the armory is late. And now Cyril's going to have a lot of map control. Well, one, just because the creep spread hasn't really been dealt with at all, uh, or at least minimally. And two, because he has enough production in order to split his army to deal with the Metavax. In fact, Burrow is on the way more for scouting and blocking bases than for Burrowed Mains, but occasionally. I don't know why this SCP is here, but just just chilling. Try on a peace mission with some minerals. We don't do peace around here. Maybe pieces of Zerg after the Widow Mines hit. That's about it. Infestation pick, groove spines. You see? <laughs> uh, plus one Hydra range. Ghosting. Okay, you know what? Can we just finish out the whole... What are we missing? Okay, drilling claws. There it is. Can I get, like, another starport, maybe? And then on the other side, uh, overlord speed. And what other... What else do we need to fill in? Overlord speed. And, yeah, that's about it. Like, and a lurker down. And then I think we'll have all the fixings.
Overlord speed is actually a very important upgrade for keeping up with your army. Otherwise, you're going to lose all your overseers, then the ghosts are going to cloak, and Mara's going to look like a pro. Thank you, there we are. Overlord speed, darker den, three more command centers, liberators on the way, yada, yada, yada. All right, 10 minutes in, maxed out, 80-something workers. Every tech in the book. Thank you, we made it. All right. Now we can play the game. Four ghosts on the way. Now, Hydraling Bane actually does quite well against the ghosts because they don't have any efficient snipe targets. The cost of the ghosts is quite high. So, against Hydraling Bane, until you get a critical mass, they're just kind of a liability. We'll have to see how much that is true. Serral gonna want to take a fight while he has the 2-2 advantage, which could end any second. He doesn't know exactly when, but Banelings from the right flank. Crashing through onto the planetary. Definitely vulnerable alongside the SCVs. Nine SCVs down. The rest of the army is pretty easily cleaned up. And another command center walks over. Well, saunters over and, and sits down and delays. So that killed nine SCVs and delayed mining for upwards of ten seconds. <laughs> that was the net effect of that. Once again, Serral fighting a costly battle. That could end up... I mean, we are way ahead of ourselves on this one. But that could end up costing him the War of Attrition. There is precedent for this. Meanwhile, trying to break through the depots, but the Banelings weren't first in line, which means he took a little extra time. The ghosts at the back. A few Hellbats. Decent split. Hydra's coming through. Meanwhile, before the planetary's done, more SCVs. Maru holding the line. He's lost some SCVs. He hasn't started 3-3. I think he'll rectify that momentarily. More ghosts. His ghost count is up to 8. There are 11 queens, 2 vipers. We got plus 3 carapace. We got adrenal glands. Plus 1 ranged attack. Adaptive talents. The lurker speed and speed burrow. Widow Mine, probably the decent connection. Ghosts on the back line. Do they have cloak? They do not. They can run, but they can't hide. The Overseers also would prevent it. Another planetary smashed, but there are more command centers where that came from. How many does he have left in reserve? Four orbitals, one command center, one planetary on the field right now. Here comes another one. Yanks the ghost. It survives. What? Okay, now it's dead. It does land an EMP on something. I don't think it hit any Vipers. Everybody wasn't sure what was happening there for a second. Uh, he, Cyril tried to burrow a Zergling, but just barely missed the mark onto the base. He's once again trying to bludgeon Maru into submission. And, well, an Overseer into the main. What could it mean? Does he do it? Oh, double Nidus! Double Nidus in the main. A Marauder. More Marauders coming in. The sprint back, but at the front, here comes Cyril again. A tank and two Liberators, more than enough to drive Cyril back, though. If he could get the engineering base, he could deny the plus three infantry weapons and armor, and that would give him a lot more fighting power on the field for longer. But... Maru with... Since Maru isn't maxed out, most, mostly thanks to Cyril, he has units popping out of the barracks, so Cyril kind of uh, outplaying himself a little bit there. But the ranged lurkers from below, don't ask how the geometry of this one works. Whoop. Down goes the Overseer. Once again, Cyril trying to break Maru, and Maru holding strong. 200 supply, plenty of ghosts. 14 indeed. Ooh, the ghost taking a weird path thing there. We haven't seen any infest... <clears throat> We're seeing an infester in production now, as Cyril's starting to realize he's going to have to contend with the ghost head-on. His pathogen gland's done. No, not quite yet. Another round. More tanks. Comes in from the left side. 
Liberator's a little out of position for this. Yanks another one. Knocks it down. Lurker's at the back. Looking for Snipes. Doesn't find it. The bio army actually chasing it down. A handful of Vikings to try to drive the Vipers away. Meanwhile, here comes Sarah looking for another round when the stim runs out. The lurkers run in. Slices through one unlucky marauder. Marauder's closing in on 3-3. Sarah -three. actually didn't get plus three melee. Uh, he's working on plus two ranged attack. Oh no, you can't really turn away from the ghost. He, he lost vision for a second. The scan, not there. Sarah getting not once but twice escaping the firing squad meanwhile justin orbital at the third it wasn't smashed before he's gonna try now but there's a there's an investor but what is it gonna do with that many tanks there's no army to follow up a fungal the investor the the concentric circle right now Cyril just sees sensor towers everywhere there's nowhere that Cyril can go, that Mario's not going to see it at least some time before. A scan almost killed the Infester. I don't even know if Maru noticed. He's got high sec auto tracking on the way. He's got building armor. Another attack. The right flank. Driven back. Shot down. Maru not flinching. Cyril running out of angles to attack that Maru hasn't locked down. Not that much gas lost on either side. Another engagement. Blinding cloud, maybe. Baneling cost is heavy. Banelings, four banelings is 100 gas. A couple dozen of them died there. One way or another. The sensor towers helping out a lot. Cyril, he's trying. It's... It's not working. It, it, it isn't working. It Maru is getting stronger and stronger with each attack. His defenses are not breaking. Maybe he can break through here. A handful of Zerglings. A whole lot coming in. Pathogen glands. Building armor not quite done. A lot of the ghosts in the center. But now Maru starting to work his way across. The overlapping siege. Meanwhile, Cyril looking up the center. If he can get the ghosts. Okay. The scariest part of the army. Sarah's even supply block lost too many overseers throughout this. Double spire on the way, indicating he knows this isn't the end. It's just the beginning. Pathogen glands. Three more command centers from Maru. He's got to spend his money on some. Sarah's starting to bank up a lot of gas. Greater Spire immediately. Flyer attack immediately. The double Spire play. We're going to Broodlords once again. Neural Parasite. Bio Army clearing up creep where it can. Halfway across the map. The Lurker is in a holding pattern. As Maru now able to get some breathing room. Sarah realizing that 15 ghosts is, is a lot to contend with. The uh, high and low grounds here, tough to navigate, especially for the Zerg army. Parasitic bomb, great! Hitting so many air units, a lot of damage. Transfuses coming through. The knitting crew has to sew it back together. Trying to keep it up. Tanking a lot of damage. If only the queens get hit, that's a best case scenario for Sarah. Much to their dismay. They will have their revenge. Well, if we get to Broodlords. The scans across the board. The choke points asphyxiating. Turrets just kind of dotting the field as he knows the infestors, the hidden infestors behind the lines are one of the largest threats to his army. This is all on creep here, surprisingly, as in scan to deal with it. Is he actually out of scans? I don't believe you. He's got five orbitals. How does one run out of scans on five orbitals? Well... We'll see, Cyril. These are key bases. Maru's threatening bases that Cyril should have locked down. More snipes to the top left. Eleven broodlords on the way. Money in the bank for both sides. It's about position and trades. Will you hold?
The brood lords have been spotted. Maru, upon killing the hatchery, will back off. Sarah will reclaim the high ground for now. Bio army is drawing into siege. Couple tanks. Maru upgrading all the fancy things. Plus three mech armor. Advanced ballistics. I assume that's Ghost Cloak. Indeed, he has everything on the Ghost Academy queued up. Cloak, shockwaves, and a nuke. You know, the big three. Ship weapons level two. Meanwhile, Cyril also filling in the gaps. Plus three ranged and melee attack, as well as plus one flyer carapace. More sensor towers for Maru as it looks closer and closer to a Bronze League Heroes game with the TPM and Sensor Tower coverage. Four more command centers. That'll give him, uh, I'm gonna say 15. I think that's a little high, but not much. It's definitely over 10. The broods making their way forward. Where are the ghosts? Center of the map. Are there any infestors? Six of them. Looks like they're all with the Broodlords. Oh. <laughs> does he spot the ghost? He does. Snipes. And he's getting the transfuses. If he can transfuse in between the snipes, he can survive. It takes two snipes to kill a Brood. The knitting crew holding it together. A lot of energy bars to manage. Maru swinging back over to the right flank. He may just give up this left side. The summoning circle of broodlings will force the command center to pick up and leave uncomfortably. Marauders moving forward, clearing out unprotected static defenses. Spores no match. No concussive shells should work on spores. They have knees. In production, the rest. More command centers. Mech armor, shockwaves, blue flame. Flyer plus two everything. A Ventria scan in the wild. The queen's gone down. How many are left? A nuclear missile coming up next. Possibly the least relevant of the things produced at the Ghost Academy in these exciting games. Banelings do not want to hit Marauders, but nothing else really does either. The Lurkers will eventually slice through as we move very much into the War of Attrition. Match point. Command centers taking up almost as much floor space of the map as they don't. Maru, we're going to actually count. He has 10 orbitals, 3 command centers, stock command centers, and 3 planetaries. He's now throwing away his SCVs and the Broodlords. Like, you could just kill your own SCVs. It's such... I, I've never thought about it until semi-recently, about how much of a power... Everybody does it, because everyone's always done it. I think because Maru did it in 2010. But, like, it would be a lot quicker to just kill your own SCVs. But it's such a power move to throw them into Broodlords instead. Like, it very, it is, it's the mental damage you're doing by saying, here, kill these. I don't need them anymore. Oh no, EMP had so much. As Maru getting, finally, afterburners, the afterthought. He's literally looking at all his buildings and probably clicking the buttons, probably with his mouse. Like, Rapid reignition system, I apologize. The after... It's medevac speed, by the way. It's actually an amazing upgrade. It's only 100 to 100, and it upgrades very quick. It really is something people should get. It's like overlord speed. Like, you should just kind of get... If you have a fusion core and you don't have that, that's just disrespectful. Anyways, more people need to get rapid reignition system. Moving on. I'm not trying to sell you rapid reignition system, but maybe uh, uh, a multi-level marketing... Don't worry about it. 
Like, you go up, you go down, but you stay up if you have rapid reignition system. Anyways, the SCVs are now waiting patiently to die to Queens. Not all are succeeding in their mission. They're working on it. Mining with... Okay, so the last of the gas is long distance mine by Sarah. It looks like we're gonna have the big, big fight. Here we go. Maru pushing in to what is the last fresh mining base. He's got the other one. The Broodlords exchanging fire. Parasitic Bomb pulls back the Liberator. Ghosts in the front mine. Not ghosts. Those are SCVs. Easily confused. Is that... Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Was that... Uh, nuclear missile. Okay. The other one, Microbial Shroud. I didn't remember the name. Oh, don't... Oh, is he actually... The nuke's gonna land. Well, that created some space. Maru gonna use that to move forward. Yeah, I think Sarah was like, are you serious? The... Meanwhile, Fungals looking for more snipes. Sarah holding the line. The armies exchanging fire. Broodlings raining down. Splash damage onto the Thors. Microbial Shroud keeping the Queens intact a little bit longer. And it looks like Sarah will hold... But at what cost? I'm not sure why the lurkers and banelings ended up over here. I mean, he's got 9,700. Oh, snipes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One ghost. Oh, my God. The broodlings just willed into existence. Actually... I take it all back. I'm just used to Cyril losing these fights. Cyril's lost 8,000 more minerals, but he's only lost... He's actually lost 300 less gas. For the first time in these long, drawn-out battles, Cyril seems to have drawn even. Which is not a place... Is Microbial Shroud the true answer? Meanwhile, the Broodlings rain down. You gotta be very careful. Thors are super dangerous. And so are Liberators if you come within range. The Queen count, though. There's no Queens. There's no Queens. Without the Queens, you can't transfuse the Broods. I the Broodlords are now permanently damaged, at least until more Queens come out. A nuclear missile has already launched out. Will we be able to kill the ghost? Where's the ghost? There's the ghost! He's killing it! But A blinding cloud beautifully done by Cyril. Actually moving forward. He got one of the Liberators. EMPs. And suddenly the Terran army all picked up into the rapidly reignited Metavacs. By today. Okay, so, Sarah holds. And Maru has now lost over 1,500 more gas. Yeah, it is important to note, the Broodlords do damage when they attack as well. That's why you ideally want to hit the Thors, as the Broodlings are just there to make things complicated. But the damage is mostly dealt with the Broodlord Impact, which is a, a much higher single damage. Alpha damage, as fancy games call it. Um, because it's an Alpha Lord. Okay, stop, stop calling yourself that. I, 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 <laughs> Maru decides, maybe don't attack into the most entrenched position on the map. Maybe change the equation a bit. He... Okay... I'm going to bring this up one more time. In order to win a game of StarCraft, the technical uh, way to eliminate your opponent is to destroy all of their buildings. I'm just throwing that one out there. Just, just as a reminder. As Cyril is rebuilding a lair, a, a spire, a pool, and an infestation pit on the other side of the map. So that tells a story. I don't 
That's this angle is looks pretty disgusting. Does he have neural parasite? He does. The spore crawlers are going underneath. This angle looks pretty rough here. I'm not sure exactly who it's worse for. It's very hard to tell. Both sides are still at 200 supply because they're constantly producing. It oh EMP he's EMPing. Oh yeah, I guess if the infestors just fly through. Meanwhile, the lurkers are going to work. The liberators are kind of just rotating around the revolving door of freedom here. It uh, Maru has wrapped around all the way and now is attacking the base from the north. Um, which wasn't exactly what I meant by changing the equation, but here we are. And it, it does seem to be making some progress. The Serral is down to 166 supply. Meanwhile, and Ricky, the accidental swarm host, is in production. A, cla a nuke! Maru working all the angles in every possible way. He's got to get that ghost. That ghost is hiding. It's still firing the nuke! He's still firing the nuke! He's going to have to back off! Oh my god, it lands and does damage! Oh my, all, everything in the orange, beautiful autumn colors, but now is not the time for a seasonal display. He will nuke Cyril off the, Ricky shows up a little late to the party. Oh my. Yeah, the nuke actually did some damage there. I don't know if it outright killed anything, but those brutal, where are the queens? Where are the queens? There are no- there's only one queen! She's overworked and underpaid. One transfuse comes out, but these broodlords are almost all within one snipe of death. How many brood- it's 25 broodlords. Oh my. They both still have huge banks, especially for this stage of the game. Looks like the SCVs come out to repair. We need more queens. No, no. Serral needs more queens. He's building corruptors and investors. No, they don't heal. A Ventri... Wait a second. A Venquadra scan. Doesn't sound as clever, but... Four scans. Just making sure he's got the whole picture here. Serral's army supply is at 168 to 148. Somehow this will be the longest game so far. It just keeps going. Another scan. The snipes. He can't let one round of snipes. Oh, no. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. Cyril has exactly zero gas income. Okay, now now exactly 44, but that's still, still not great. The, the Broodlord army still has not healed up. It regenerates very slowly. Way too slowly. But no! Oh, beautiful blinding cloud! It doesn't get any better! The Broodlords are raining down onto the Thors! I don't even think all of them are in high impact mode. It looks like more coming up, though. The Broodlords. Punching through. There are some ghost cloaked. Cyril knocked down to 144 supply. Oh... The blinding crowd, great. The vipers still have energy. A lot of the infestors, very lacking. So EMP and fungals, like fungals don't really kill anything. They just hold it in place so it can be blinding crowd. Like it takes somewhere around way too many and way too many fungals to kill a Thor, so. It looks like the Broodlords left are, are mostly intact, mostly fresh. Cyril's out of money. He's now lost a thousand more gas. He was never able to bring the Broodlords back to full, and I think that means, like, he, he had half HP Broodlords for like three minutes here. Cyril needs to win a fight now. Oh no. Oh, EMP on half the Infestors. And it's not like he has that many to begin with. Ah, oh, A few snipes could knock the rest out. The high impact Thor is having a high impact on this game. Raining down the broodlings. This is it. This is your last shot. Fungals, blinding cloud, everything on the table. 
He a neural parasite as well. Even though he scanned the thorns, the best counter the thorns. He's gotta target the investors. The thorns are targeting the ghost. Oh my god! Has he turned it? Sarah! Beating thorns with thorns may have been the play. Some of the thorns are not even in high impact mode. Is it enough? Maru is mining. He's got seven. Oh no. It looks so close. It looks so great for Cyril. And then you open the production tab up and there's seven thorns. <laughs> oh. If Maru was broke after that fight, then I think Cyril turns it all around, but... Oh no. Seventh and some ghosts and some medevacs. Oh no. I think every changeling just got sniped. Um that that is the extra amount of minerals that Maru kept throughout all this. He's actually mined more than Cyril and more gas. He's managed to hold on to these bases. It appears brood lords were the answer to the question of how you beat this army qu composition. Infester, Broodlord, Viper, and a lot of praying. Oh, the ghost knocked down. There is some detection via Spore Crawler. That is way too many Thors. EMPs. Maru wins! 4 to 2. Another brawl, another brutal game. But another late game Maru victory, redemption. In one of the longest and most exhausting series I have ever seen. No. Well, and that's how it ends. Thank you. To Alpha X for putting on the tournament. King of Battles 2, check them out. Team Alpha X sponsoring a lot of the best players as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Hope my voice will ever recover. Good luck, have fun. I'll see you next time. Stay chill.